welcome back to episode three of Let's Go Fishing. Today, we're going to be catching barbel on the magnificent River Wye. Well, this is my plan. I'm going to try and catch you some lovely barbel today. I'm going to use a few methods. I'll try the straight, the straight lead, I'll try probably a feeder, and I may well try a bit of rolling meat or rolling cheese. I brought lots of baits with me today, which I will show you later on. But for now, let's go fishing. First bait, I've always bring a little bit of my old favourite cheese. Love me a bit of cheese. I've also bought these um, these boilies to try today. These are a fish meal type boilie. Some black halibut pellets here, and I've also got some pre-drilled pellets here as well, which are excellent on the hook. Along with that, I've also got some paste, which I'm going to wrap round around the pellets as you can see there and ground bait wise because I intend to use a bit of ground bait in the feeder hopefully I'm going to start off on the straight lead but I may change to a feeder later and my favorite one is the old meaty salmon big fan of that one that's a fish meal bait that's very high quality fish meal in there and then not forgetting the hemp and halley crush this is catching so many fish, it's absolutely awesome. So these two will be in combination as the ground bait. We'll add a few pellets to that. And we'll also try the boilie. And if things get desperate, we might try the cheese. So that's really the basis of what I'm going to be doing today. Let's see how we get on with that. Okay, so we've uh, explained to you and shown you the baits we're going to be using today. And now it's a question of how we're going to introduce the bait into the swim. This is a lovely glide swim going down onto some shallows and there is a, a central channel really that runs through it and that's where the barbel will sit. Now there's several ways of feeding it, you could use a feeder, we could use a bait dropper but today because the water is really really clear and low I've decided to actually introduce the bait with a catapult. So I should be catapulting hemp in and catapulting some pellets and some boilies and then I'm going to leave that to settle while I get my gear set up and then by the time my gear's set up and the swim's settled down there's a very good chance fish may well be feeding on it. The job is to pop a boilie on and I've got a little hair rig on here so I'm literally going to just slide it down over that and then put a boilie stop on that to hold it on. Just thread it in like so, and then, and then pull it into the boiling. And that is the bait. So it's that first cast expectancy, but to be honest, we've got all day. We've been putting a bit of bait in, but there's no rush. And that first cast went a little bit shorter than I wanted, maybe a yard or two shorter, but we'll leave it where it is. See if that uh, works. Now, what I'm using today, I'm using a 12 foot barbel rod today uh, with a quiver tip, with a two ounce quiver tip. I'm a big fan of quiver tips because I like to be able to see, although I've got my finger on the rod like this and I feel any big bites, and if you get a big bite, obviously it's going to wrench the rod over, but sometimes the bites are more subtle. And I like to be able to watch that uh, quiver tip to see if there's any little knocks. Sometimes fish, if there was a feeder on, could be knocking the feeder. And you can see whether or not anything's there, because if you chuck it in and nothing's happening on the tip and nothing's there, then nothing's there. But when fish are there, they will be active in the swim and uh, they'll let their presence be known either in the form of line bites 
or oh I've had a little pull then that was my first indication so there was a little tiny drop back on the tip so that's the first indication that uh, there's fish out there now this particular swim it's got some form for barbel it's got a lot of form for chub in fact a friend of mine a good friend of mine Ray Cook had some lovely chub out of here the other day on the waggler on the bread I think he had 11 but I'm trying to avoid the chub at the moment. I want the barbel. So I'm using a hair rig with a longer hair. So if I wanted to catch a chub, I'd put the hair right up on the point, a bend of the hook. But with a barbel, they just pick it up. And I'm on a size 10 hook today. Size 10 barbless hook, a strong little pattern. I've got a nine pound hook length. And I've got a small running ledger going down onto two stop beads and a little twizzle boom, which we've shown you earlier. So now it's a question of sitting here waiting, seeing what's happening. Interestingly, I'm just looking in the shallows and the shallows are absolutely alive with fry this year. They're everywhere. So for now, let's just see what happens for a bit and see if we can hook a barbell. first barbel of the day lovely looking fish we're, we're just getting into autumn now we're, we're into September autumn's a great time to catch barbel and there's the result hopefully we'll catch a few of his mates the water temperature is getting cooler the summer summer's really gone now just odd nice day you might get up to 16 18 degrees but now this is the time these fish are packing on the weight for winter and we're catching them in a shallow swim here but these fish will move off here come winter because when the winter floods come this will be far too fast and shallow for them so there you go that's the result let's see if we can catch some of his mates now and pop this one back i'm just going to put a bit of paste onto the top of the pellets so i've just molded some of this paste around this is a mixture of ground pellet of oil and stuff and the idea is that will actually leak off and hopefully attract a fish. So let's just pop that down there and uh, we'll cast this in now. That looks good. Gosh, you move the feeder, or move the uh, straight lead rather. Look, the, uh, gosh, that was a quick result. Well, maybe that putting that bit of paste on is, uh, was possibly a chub. So I've got quite a long hair on. I had a bite straight away then. I didn't hook it, but nevertheless, undeterred. I was just about to fire some more bait in and the rod tip bounced a couple of times, so something grabbed it. So let's go back in where we caught that one before and see if we can catch another. So back across, swing it out. That's it, that's it. Job done, job done. Into the gully, just pop the rod there. That's it, it tightens up of its own accord. I'm just going to get uh, a few more pellets, fire them in with the old catapult. You seem to want a bit of bait, maybe that's the way forward. 
let them have a bit of bait, get them competing a bit. So, let's see how long it is before we can uh, catch number two. Just retied the hook length and I'm just going to chuck it slightly upstream. That's my feed's been going upstream and sometimes they can sit, sit on it where, it where it sort of enters the water. So I'm just going to literally go an upstream cast and fish for a slight drop back. And we just flick a few more pellets in. Let's see if uh, my little series cracked. I'm going to literally just touch ledger again so that if it does suddenly drop back, I'll instantly know. And as you know, I've showed this technique before when I was chub fishing. But if anything takes it, the tip would bounce backwards and we'll just immediately pick up the slack. So let's just see if we can get a bite. Oh, oh, I'm on. I'm on. My plan worked. Now, is this a chub? This could be a chub, actually. Or is it? I don't know. He's quite heavy. And we've got a bit of go in him. I think this ain't no chub. Oh, golly jeepers. I think we've got another barbel. So my little upstream ledger. Oh, my word. Gosh, he's strong, he's strong. He's on, he's coming, he's, he's coming towards me down across the shallows. Wow. Oh, there it is, there it is. There it is now. Wow. I wasn't quite, I wasn't 100% certain when I saw that fish then what that was, but I'm, I think because he so feels so powerful and so strong, I think this has got to be another barbel. He's now swimming upstream. Slowly, I don't want him to get in that old snag that he, one got into just now. Let's get the landing net ready. Let me get, get him just down here. Wow, that's lively. <laughs> Number two barbel. That. Look at that. Hey, look at the big fins on that. Fantastic, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Wow. I think similar sort of size to the other one, I reckon. Fantastic. Well, there you go. I'll just pop him in the net and we'll pop him back in a minute. Terrific. Important to give him a rest, isn't it? So we've got this big landing net here and that's another thing that's important too. And this has got soft mesh. It's rubberized mesh in this one. And see how he's flaring his gills. He's, he's got his Got his pectoral fins out there. Let's get this baby back, shall we? There we go. We're in again. The old deadly upstream technique again. It's got me another fish. We said we'd catch another and then we have some lunch. But maybe we're on them now. Exciting, isn't it? Lovely, 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 lovely. As I said, you've got to have the faith. And when things aren't going quite right, you've got to make changes. And that's what we've done again. We've, we've gone to the old upstream ledgering technique. Another barbel, yep, smashing. And that was a lovely little drop back bike again. It's my favourite technique of all. And you notice I'm backwinding rather than using the clutch. The clutch tends to put a line twist in. So, yeah, I'm quite, quite happy to let it uh, backwind. Keep the rod up. On barbless hook, size 10 barbless hook. Ooh, lively still. And this technique, what we're managing to do with a slightly longer hair is avoid the chub because there's a lot of chub in this peg. But so far, we haven't caught a chub today. We've only had barbel. And look, he's getting, sometimes you're getting a little, little, little bit of air and that slows him up a bit. So we'll see if we can uh, draw him over now. Here we go. 
Way. Look at that, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Bad fish, actually. Well, we've unhooked him. Just been giving him a little rest in the net here. And as you can see, a lovely fish. I think he's probably the best one we've caught today. And that's what we come for. Why barbel? Look at those stunning autumn colours. And what a backdrop to come fishing. What a place to come fishing, isn't it? Amazing. Absolutely addictive. And this stretch is a great stretch. It's not as prolific as some stretches. You've got to work for your fish a bit. But I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm, I, you know, happy with that. So, yeah, we're going to pop this one back. I'll put a bit more bait in. And then we're going to have some lunch. And then I'm going to see if I can catch some more. Isn't that wonderful? Superb. Okay, well, let's uh, pop this one back. This has been a lovely fish to catch. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Yeah, they're always strong. He's had a bit of a rest, you see. I'm out of here. We've just had a lovely bit of lunch. Mrs. Pons has uh, sent us out with some super grub. I went to the butchers yesterday, get some homemade pork pie from the butchers and a granary loaf and some lovely cheese so we've uh, we've fed well so now it's um, back into action time so I haven't really put any bait in before lunch because I want to sort of try and build the swim up again this afternoon I'm going to stay with the pellet technique fishing upstream to try and catch another fish and then I'm thinking Instead of the straight lead that I'm currently on, I'm going to put a feeder on, mix a little bit of ground bait up and see if I can catch on that. So again, I'm going to cast this one upstream. I've uh, put a couple of, couple of new pellets on. Upstream. That's it. And then let a bit of a bow out. So that has actually landed upstream. And then I just let the line and the current take the bow up. And so the line is actually pointing upstream. And I'll tell you what, this is the most deadly technique you can ever use. It's a brilliant technique. But I'll tell you why it's good. Is that when the fish takes it, it doesn't feel the resistance it does if you're fishing conventionally downstream. It's got to pull against the rod tip, whereas this, it, uh, the lead is only just heavy enough to hold bottom and um, so when the tip moves, in other words when the, the fish takes the bait, so what I do, I go back to my touch leathering technique and the only reason I do that is I can feel instantly if the line has gone slacker on me because I'm not looking for great big pullover. I'm looking for the tip to bounce back, the lead to move and a fish to be on. And then you tend to hook the fish and then um, they usually charge off downstream. But anyway, so we've had a successful morning's fishing. Three lovely fish. So let's see what the afternoon brings. It's an interesting one actually, um, I'm not using a bait dropper, that's a good technique to use in these swims. The river is very clear and the bait dropper can be very successful but because the river is so clear it's not got excessive flow, it's not particularly deep so I'm actually catapulting oh, and I'm in, I'm in straight away after lunch on the deadly upstream, it's only taken a couple of minutes and we're away again. Fantastic. Now this one feels quite weighty, but you can never quite tell. Back winding, as you can see. It's coming towards me. That's it. Still on. That's it. So, that's a great start after lunch. It must have been that bit of butcher's pork pie, I reckon. It's put me in top form. And uh, yeah, see how that rod bends, lovely. And I've got a two ounce tip in it. And the reason being, this is 175 rod. It's actually a Corum Neotiric, this particular one. This is one of my favorites. The original Neotiric range was, um, well, 20 years ago. And they gradually worked on them. And this one's a super rod. Got Preston extremity reel. 
which again, a good size reel, good size spools on them. Uh, yeah, it looks a similar size maybe to the other ones we've had. They're a bit, bit of peas in the pod at the minute, I think. Well, we'll see in a minute. But interestingly, you didn't, that, those fish just firing those pellets in upstream and fishing the bow method is working a treat, absolute treat. Truthfully, I don't really need to change to a feeder while this technique is working so well, but we, we may do just to show you another technique. There's the kingfisher. Oh, look at that. He's been up and down all day. Oh, I do enjoy this. I do enjoy this. What's not to enjoy about this? All those dog days of summer when we had 80 degrees of heat, you know, when we did that chub video, it was very hot. When we fish, when we fished for the tents recently, it was pretty warm, but i am sat here today in a t-shirt on the old matchbox, happy days. Yeah, and the fish is coming towards me a bit. He's still got loads of spirited fight in him. But I do believe he's, uh, he's getting nearer to the net now. That time I, um, I did actually put two pellet O's on, which I'll show you those in a minute. Great bait. You see them just hanging out the mouth now. I haven't changed anything on the tackle this morning. Same hook. Nine pound mono. And he's into the net. Happy days. Number four. Let him have a little rest. Yeah, similar size to the others, I'd say. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. No rush to unhook him. Let him have a breather. We're starting to have a really nice day here. We've had a lovely day, but we're starting to catch regularly now, which is great. So, no pressure for me now. We've, we've caught fish already. This one here, I suppose, um, they're similar sort of size, some of these. They're not massive fish, but they're, they're good chunky fish. I reckon this one's probably four to five pound, maybe. But look, it's fin perfect. See those fins there? Fish is happy too. The water temperature's cooled down a lot now. So I'm really happy with that. So again, we'll just keep him in the water there. He's strong now. You can feel he's already strong. He's done. Look at that. Cool. These are Sonu's finest pelletos. They're pre-drilled pellets, as you can see in there. Literally, I put them on my baiting needle. And then all I need to do then the baiting needle over the, the loop, thread them up the hook, onto the back, onto the hair, and then just put a bait stop on there. And that will be job done. So we're gonna stick with the technique we've been doing well at. The last two or three fish have come on this upstream technique. Two pelletos, size 10 hook, and what I do is I do literally just cast it upstream and as soon as it hits the water, I let a bow out. So as you can see, that's upstream, right? And then it's hit the bottom and then I literally just let some line off so that when I put it against the rod rest, the line is then taken up there and the line is pointing upstream. I, fell, I fired some more hemp in. I fired some more pellets in on the catapult and uh, now we just, I'm just waiting for it to drop back again and hopefully another barb. Actually, I think it's a good time to talk about the um, way, way I'm fishing and why I'm fishing like this. A lot of barbel anglers like using alarms, uh, two rods up in the air, sort of almost like cod fishing style. And that's fine, every each to their own. And a lot of the Trent anglers fish that way and they fish overnight. I never fish nights. I don't fish nights. I might, I might stop into dark occasionally, but my pleasure is catching them in the daytime. I can see everything that's going on around me and really enjoy it. So I rather fish with a sort of an uprated match approach. I've got a 175 barbel rod, so, you know, normal, tackle these days. On this reel here I've got about, um, I think this is nine or ten pound line I suspect. I'm using nine pound 
hook length, which is a very flexible one, a Preston's one. And I've got a size 10 hook on, but it's a strong size 10 barbless with a hair rig. But the main thing for me, there was a little bang then, the main thing for me is I'm watching that two ounce tip for movement, I'm feeling any movements, and as soon as I feel it goes slack, I strike. And it's a deadly technique, I can't tell you. you if you do nothing else but from, learn from this video, try this upstream ledger technique with just enough lead to hold bottom, pan out a bow of line, Oh, there's that lovely kingfisher gone by. Wow, he's been up and down all day. Now, you wouldn't see that in the dark, would you? So that's a good reason for being here in the daylight. There's also been a grey wagtail over there, been hopping about on a regular basis. And at this time of year, we're getting flocks of migrant finches on the way through, leaving the country now to fly back to warmer countries. It's not long now before we'll be feeling winter. But this way of fishing, you're constantly feeling for bites. You're constantly watching. I'm not interested in setting up bivvies, lying on bed chairs, listening for alarms and using bolt rigs. That's just not my style of fishing. Afternoon. How you doing? Good, thank you. Yourself? Where have you come from? Somewhere back that way. Somewhere that way. Yeah, first year doing it. I'll tell you. How many hours? How many hours have you been paddling? Since about 10 o'clock this morning. How have you? Fair I'm play. Yeah. <laughs> Where have you got to go to Ross? I'm um, at Hereford. I think so, yeah. Plan. Luxels, I should think. Yeah, don't worry, it's only about another 20 mile. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there about dusk, I should think. <laughs> it's all downstream though, that's the good news. Yeah. I'll re recast for those, they're a bit softer. And there's a little tiny bit of paste left on them. I'm going to chuck this one in slightly downstream. See if that will uh, produce a bite there, because those pellets will have worked their way down a little bit, but sometimes the fish might back off a bit, you know. So we'll just try different spots. Don't always cast to the same spot all the time. Move it around the swim a bit. Sometimes the fish drop back and sometimes those big fish can literally be just sat off the main shoal of fish. In fact, I know a lot of people fish two rods and they'll put one rod sort of downstream. Well, I'm very much a one rod man. I just don't enjoy fishing with two rods. I'd rather fish just with the run rod and zone all my energy onto one rod. Well, it's that mid-afternoon now. And, uh, you know, a lot of barbel anglers, you know, they don't actually turn up till sort of evening time these days. So I often see them when I'm leaving, they're just arriving. So I call it the charge of the night brigade. And I used to fish with Steph Horat, bless him. And uh, we would be fishing waters on the Grey Twos, famous waters. And we don't ever fish them in the day. But when we used to go to places like Turvey, there was nobody there in the day bar us. And then we'd be walking back up the river bank and all you'd see was twinkling of night lights and night sights on the tops of rods. And unknown anglers down the bank, all fishing for the barbel after dark. And we were on our way back, have a pint on the way home. <laughs> a lovely fish, isn't it? Don't mind catching chub that big, do we? Fin perfect. 
lovely wide chub, lovely colours, absolutely fabulous. Look at the fins, fantastic. Happy with that. So I'm going to slip him back and uh, see if we can catch another barbel. Bait to come off. Well, my bait's come off. It's, uh, it's really going home time. It's always nice to finish on a fish. Sadly, we couldn't finish on a fish. Our last fish was Mr. Chubb, which was a lovely, lovely Chubb. Um, we've had a great day. We've had some beautiful barbel. Finished off with that nice Chubb at the end. We fished in amazing surroundings today. Absolutely loved it. Not a soul here, absolutely fabulous. So we're gonna call it a day now. We hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember, if you've liked it, like and subscribe. We'd be very grateful. It helps us bring more content to you. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you another day.